Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up, everyone? This is OJ. The flying machine moves as fast as a baby dragon, but its attack is similar to a musketeer in damage, attack speed, and range. With its faster move speed, it locks onto a tower way faster than a musketeer. Left alone, it'll deal over 700 damage to the tower. It's very similar to a musketeer, except it's flying and has slightly less health. Against a baby dragon, the results are very, very close. It dies one shot faster, so the baby D gets one hit on your tower. Just like a musketeer's slower attack speed, it's not going to completely stop a skeleton army. But realistically, you're not really going to leave the flying machine by itself. Here's a situation where I had the ice golem tanking the baby dragon, so the flying machine won the battle. The machine is really fragile, so it pairs quite well with tanks like giants, lava hounds, ice golem, and whatever. The real beauty of this mechanical menace is that it's a flying ranged unit. Any spawner or elixir pump planted one tile from the river will be snipeable. The princess tower won't be able to reach it. Realistically though, the pump won't be placed one tile in front. It'll be placed in front of the king tower. No big deal, it'll still wreck the pump. The first shot denies one elixir. The second hit denies three elixir. The third shot denies four elixir. Four shots, five elixir. Fifth shot denies six elixir. And the final shot denies seven out of eight elixir. Against the tombstone, it takes it out in three shots, nice and swift. Especially against the Lava Hound deck, they'll be forced to address your flying machine. It can completely shut down my Barbarian Hut and its spawns. The safe position for a spawner will be if it's completely in front of the King's Tower. But come on, if you're playing a Barbarian Hut, put anything down. Mega Minion, Dark Goblins, whatever can hit air, the flying machine will be a negative elixir trade. Against the Goblin Hut, it's not as solid. Even left alone, it struggles to stay alive with all those Spear Goblins chipping at it. It'll only land one hit on the Princess Tower after taking out the hut. So even though it can target spawners and elixir pumps, one tile in front of the King Tower, this is not the case with defensive buildings. Cannons, mortars, inferno towers, they all have smaller hitboxes. But a cannon planted that far back is completely useless. It won't pull a giant. You'll have to plant it a bit more forward, even with this optimal cannon position. It's not safe from the flying machine sniping it safely out of range of that princess tower. If a defensive building is planted in the other lane, it's so far forward that you can snipe it in either lane, giving you the option to attack the opposite side. So the flying machine synergizes really well with the tank if you have a golem push going on. Zap resets the inferno tower and it can potentially take care of smaller units like goblins for the flying machine. Just like Dark Goblin, a Tesla wrecks the machine. But who uses Tesla in this day and age? The flying machine can one-shot skeletons, spear goblins, fire spirits, and bats. It's like a slower dark goblin. It can two-shot ice spirit, princess, dark goblin, stabby gobs, archers, and minions. So Zap will prove to be very useful to help assist it in one-shotting these creatures. It's also worth mentioning that the machine can three-shot a bomber and tombstone, then finish off those skellies. It can 5-shot all of the fireballies. This will be Musketeer, Ice Wizard, Mega Minion, Electro Wizard, Witch, Wizard, and Barbarians. It's not a massive amount of damage, but it's still quite a bit. Slightly less DPS than a Musketeer. When one Princess Tower is down and you plant the Flying Machine on the first tile, closest to the King Tower, it'll only get 2 shots on. When it's deployed on the second tile, it won't be within range of the king tower while deploying, but it'll still only get two shots on that princess tower. However, if you plant it on the third tile while deploying, it's not within range of any tower, and it'll never be within range of the king tower. It'll get the full five hits on your princess tower, dealing the entire 700 damage. The center plant is really juicy. It's almost like you're planting it right at the river for all that full damage, and it's closer. Knowing this, if you plant a flying machine on the third tile and quick drop an ice golem on the second tile just above the machine, it's massive damage. This is kind of like Royal Giant level damage. It's a relatively cheap 6 elixir combo, and right here I knew my opponent didn't have any proper counters in rotation, dealing around 2000 damage. Maybe if my opponent packed a fireball instead of lightning, he could have stopped most of that. Here's another nasty combo. Giant in the middle, flying machine in the safe spot, 
and it's absolutely devastating. Even if they had a fireball, my giant rocked their tower. It can push a Lava Hound, but really, there's no reason to push the Lava Hound in the back. You basically have less time to build Elixir for a bigger push. And once it's flown across the river, it doesn't really push the Lava Hound that much since it has a 6 tile attack range. Well, you could kind of push a Bloon. Is it really worth it? It's kind of worse than a Baby Dragon, since it stops short at the bridge since it has such a huge range of attack. When countering the Flying Machine, you've got to react fast, slightly too slow, and it'll lock onto your tower. You've got to deploy the units right as soon as it's at the bridge for the minions to take care of it. On the flip side of things, Zap pairs really well because it brings them down low enough to be one shot by that machine. Minions are an okay counter to the flying machine, but they'll take a total of 7 swipes, so that's on their third attacks that they'll be able to take out the flying machine. In this replay, my opponent had minions to counter my flying machine, but they couldn't land that 7th attack, so it survived on the map, offering so much value. It actually locked onto the tower and took it out. Ewiz, Musketeer, and Wizard can kill the flying machine in just 3 hits. Two if you have the Prince's Tower helping you. If you utilize the Electro Wizard Spawn Zap, that cuts it down to one attack. Two attacks if the tower isn't assisting. Pretty good deal. Mega Minion is probably one of the best counters against the Flying Machine. One swipe and some arrows from your Prince's Tower, and it's donezo. The Mega Minion is so solid. Even though the Flying Machine pairs really well with the tank, that Mega Minion will kill it in just two shots. Executioner is another really amazing counter against the Flying Machine. If there's a massive tank push, the Executioner actually kills the machine in two throws. You won't even need Tornado if you lined him up properly. If you don't have any fancy counters, Archers will work just as well. They can survive two shots each, long enough to distract that flying machine. It's kinda like a Dark Goblin with its fast move speed and long range. It'll lock onto the tower fast, so you have to react with an Ice Golem precisely when it's within range. You can go in with a deeper Ice Golem plant if the Flying Machine is coming in hot from the center. You've really got to watch the shadow. It might seem like it's within range, but that window of opportunity is very thin. Here's the Defender's perspective. The Flying Machine's shadow looks like it actually is within range, but you have to look at the top of the shadow. This Night Mist play forced my opponent to defend with an Inferno Tower or risk losing 700 health in the Princess Tower. But really, do you have to stress about all these counters when Fireball kills it completely? In this really big golem push, as long as I had a fireball in rotation, I didn't really need to worry about the machine. Bonus points, because I clipped two minions for a positive elixir trade. How well does it stop a hog? Not very well, but kinda like a musketeer, it can counter attack in the opposite lane if you need to. Against the baby dragon, it's pretty decent with the help of a tower. Baby dragons aren't that strong anyways. Mini P.E.K.K.A.s, lumberjacks, and most fast ground units will not be stopped by the flying machine. This is kind of the drawback since it's flying. It won't aggro those troops. It definitely won't stop a prince if it couldn't stop that mini P.E.K.K.A. But another great card that synergizes really well with it is an Ice Spear. That one elixir card is so flexible. Aggro's ground units, freezes them, and buys the flying machine time to wreck it. If you're really fast to react, it can stop a battle ram, but it won't stop the barbarians. This is worse than a Musketeer because at least the Musketeer pulls those Barbarians and tanks them. But at least they can stop a Balloon. You can even obstruct the pathing and force the Balloon to take the longer route flying around it. To summarize, the best hard counter will be Fireball because it dies in one shot. Neutral trades if you need to take it out behind a tank. Bonus points if you can clip a tower. Another good counter is Lightning. It's solid if you can clip two units and the tower. Mega Minion is perfect because it two shots it good for taking out behind tanks. And the Executioner is amazing because it can kill it in two shots with a tank in front of it. Some good synergies will be Zap because it can take out bats that can counter the machine. It can also help take out minions to three shot them faster. Plus against Goblin Gang, the Zap kills the Spear Goblins and brings the Stabby Goblins down low enough to be one shot by the Flying Machine. Ice Spear can be really good synergies too. This one elixir card empowers your Flying Machine to completely shut down ground troops like Musketeer, Mini P.E.K.K.A, Prince, and so on. Another type of good synergy will be air units. Air decks like Mega Minion, Balloon, Lava Hound, and so on. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more quality OJ. It can completely shut.